Hi, and uh, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I thought today I'd give you an update on how I'm going with the, uh, the Olympus. I always got to remember what it's called. The Olympus OMD EM5 Mark II camera, which I have on loan from my friend Len at the moment, and uh, we're possibly going to do a swap. And uh, I've been using it now for probably about three weeks and uh, maybe less than that. And uh, I'm just gonna share some of my thoughts on it so far. I've been having a great time with it and uh, some of the things that I've found out about it. It takes a bit of um, getting used to, navigating your way around the uh, system on the back of this. I've got a flip out screen that turns around here. I'm just going to turn it on. And uh, you can see on there, there's, um, I don't know whether you can see all the information that's on the side of the screen there. I can't tell there. Um, but there's a lot of information there. And um, it takes some navigating to get used to the menu system and the touch screen and all that sort of thing. But I'm gradually find, finding how to do that intuitively. The more I play with it, the more I find that I can navigate my way around and use this camera um, in, a, in a practical way. Um, one of the things I like about it the most is that... Um, there's a little knob here on the front here that whether I'm doing video or stills, I can actually change the exposure compensation just by winding that knob around, which is really quite good. So, you know, having said that, is it doing it now? Maybe not. You see, that's where I've got to. Uh, that's where I've got to work out what I'm doing at any given time. <coughs> so, but but when I do um, get a chance to use it. Um, and work it out it works really well and you can actually be holding you can shoot through the viewfinder like that or you can look at the screen on the back like that when you hold this up to your eye that cuts out the the viewfinder at the back one thing i have noticed i had to get an extra battery um that the battery because you've got this screen uh at the back it's taking up a lot of power and because it's all a, a mirrorless camera they seem to take up a lot more power and so two batteries is a must i think if you're going to have a camera like this to actually um, use it um, for any length of time so that's one thing i've noticed the other thing i noticed i've been taking a bit of video and uh, i've also been using it to do a little bit of vlogging and um, one of the things i really am very happy about is that um, one of the reasons um, i'm filming this uh, little segment here on my iphone at the moment but one of the good things i notice about this camera when i use it as a on video and for vlogging is that um, the focus is seamless and uh, whereas with my uh, canon 700d if i use that for vlogging there's a bit of a jerkiness and a bit of noise that you can hear as it focuses in and out but when walking around with this and doing video, um, it just, or even in this room I've done it, it, it will just, whatever you're on, it will just focus on and it'll focus on, on me. And you can set it up to focus on your eyes and uh, faces and all that sort of stuff. It's got individual uh, settings that you can set for the focus and touch screen on the, the settings as well. You can touch the back of the screen and, and pick a focus spot and it'll focus as well. But that's one of the things I really like about it, uh, that it follows focus beautifully. Uh, the continuous autofocus mode a lot better than what it does on my digital SLR, although later digital SLRs are probably a lot better than that. The things uh, and and the, the the great thing, of course, with these lenses, I've got three lenses, and um, uh, this one is a 12 to 50 millimeter lens. And because you get double the because of the crop factor, you get double the focal length in 35 millimeter terms. This gives me uh, this particular small lens here gives me 24 to sorry 24 to 100 zoom so it's a, a wide angle to a portrait lens a little bit of a hiccup there you have these things that happen when you're playing with cameras you don't really know too much about them sometimes so anyway but that's that's a beautiful little lens and and there's another one there that um because the uh the far end of the zoom is 300 millimeter effectively becomes a 600 millimeter zoom and i took some beautiful photos the other day um of some birds just on the local walk down by the tram line down here of um, some uh, crested pigeons and what we call toppies or uh, around here and I uh, got some beautiful close-up shots using that zoom from uh, a reasonable distance away uh, they were up in a tree up above me and I took some shots of them 
I used it for a little bit of video just walking down the street and also over at the, the Oval to watch a little bit of local football. So what I'm going to do is um, show you some uh, shots. I'm going to um, put this up to YouTube using iMovie and I'll incorporate some of the shots that I've been taking uh, of various subjects around the place. Um, one of the things that I find is, is that I would need to get with this camera is a, a, a proper flash to go with it and work out how to use other flashes. It's got a, um, a flash socket on the back here whereby you can uh, actually um, plug into a, um, uh, plug it into a, um, into an external flash, but I need to work out how to do that. Yeah, that's on the front here, sorry, yeah. So I need to work out how to do that and whether it's safe to actually use my 45 CL4 flash on here, which is a pretty old school flash. There are some schools of thought that say that the, um, uh, if you put one of the old flashes on, you might damage your camera with the power surge that goes through. I, um, from what I can read, my 45 CL4 would probably work fine on this, but if you've had any experience of, or know anyone thing about this, I, I'd like you to comment on it. So. Thanks for watching so far. I'm going to finish just here and cut over to showing you. Um, I'm going to record that after I finish this bit. Some short slideshow of uh, some movies and also some stills and make some comments as I go. So I hope you're enjoying this. And um, uh, at the end of the movie, I hope you can watch it all the way through. Maybe it'll be too boring for you. Maybe I'm too amateurish in the way I put these together. Anyway, I do my best. So um, I hope you've enjoyed watching it. And if you do get to the end of it, uh, or even before that, like if you like and subscribe if you wish, and I'll see you next time. <clears throat>
display here. Hey, butterflies. Butterflies? Where? Yeah. One just flew over. Probably was. Oh, it might have been a leaf. Might have been a leaf. Been a leaf. Leafs fly sometimes. Yes, you are. That's okay. Pardon me. <laughs> All right. We'll just keep going here. I could email this to Dean you. He says, then. pardon me. <laughs> Why, what'd you do? <laughs> so this will test the backlighting capabilities of this as well. So we'll just... Uh... Yeah, this is great light. I might take. It is. Some beautiful colour here. This camera's got built in spirit levels to tell you whether you've got the, the camera uh, on the level, so to speak. So we're coming around here. Now we're going into the sun a bit. So this is a bit backlit. So I wasn't coming in here. I might just stop. I didn't have a lens with Beautiful this colour, camera. isn't it? Yeah. There's a lot more buildings in the, in the city square since we were there, isn't it? Some still shots of the same area. Dean playing a bit of um, skullduggery. <coughs> this is all still with the 12 to 50 millimeter zoom. Okay, continue the walk around here. Now we've got a few still shots here. <coughs> it's a nice backlighting, so I tried to see what I'd get out of the camera by taking these shots of the leaves. I like that one, nice saturated colours. Now, I was travelling uh, in the suburbs the other day near our shopping centre, and there was a major mural being painted on the side of this shopping centre here, so I stopped to take some stills and a little bit of video. Beautiful colour. Of course in Australia they do a lot of this on the side of silos, painting these big murals on the side of wheat silos. This person's possibly one of those artists. This is just down near our tram line, down the end of our street. A little bit of wattle. And one of my son's real estate sale signs, for sale signs. Jamie has his own business called Elite Real Estate and sells a lot of houses in our area. Now this is just across the road alongside the tram line. There's a walking trail there. And I spotted these little birds up in the top of the tree there. So this is actually using the... Uh, the larger zoom, this is using the 75 to 300 mil zoom now, and I got some quite nice shots, some of them are a little bit blurry. I didn't realise there were two birds there when I first started taking the shots, but there are actually two birds there. These are top notch pigeons, sorry, not top knots, these are crested pigeons, and we call them toppies here locally. Beautiful colours in their wings. Member of the pigeon family or the dove family. They're interchangeable, the names of birds, I guess. The doves and the pigeons are pretty much the same type of bird. 
and there's a bronze winged pigeon that has a similar wings colors even more bright than, than the, those on this one here I spent about five or six minutes then I worked around down to the local football oval just to try this camera out uh, for some uh, sports action photos um, and this is once again using that that zoom I think it's using the 75 to 300 mil zoom again and uh, it wasn't too bad but I think I prefer my um, digital SLR my Canon 700D to do this sort of thing but some of these shots aren't too bad the Plimpton Bulldogs are the red and black team which is our local team Every Saturday afternoon and Sunday afternoon they have games down there or in the mornings as well. It's quite a, a, um, a good sporting complex. They have a clubhouse there that serves meals. The colour and the density. These are all JPEGs. I didn't shoot any raw um, shots. So I usually take JPEG so I only ever take raw if I'm really make want to make sure that I've got everything right like a wedding or something where I would need to fix things afterwards. This is some video now of the same game. Held. I haven't got anything on a tripod. Ideally, to do sports like this, you need to put the camera on a tripod and do it properly, but uh, it's not too bad. The stabilisation seems to work fairly well. Picks up the sound pretty good. Now this is just down, down the road from the oval, a little bit of video of some uh, flowers there just to see what that would look like. Certainly picked up the dogs barking as well, that's the siren at the oval. You can turn off that wind noise on this camera but I haven't worked out how to do that yet. So there you go. Thanks for watching. See you next time.